would you like to know a simple, proactive approach that will enable you to be in control of safety and requirements throughout all the development phases? During this short course on safety for electrical medical devices and the IEC 60601 series of standards, I'm going to share with you my own proven recipe on how to manage safety simply and effectively. And if you stick around to the end, I will show you my trick on how to make safety engineering fun. I am Klaus Rømer. I have worked with regulatory navigation, medical devices, medical device product development and testing for over 15 years. I am a member of the IEC Technical Committee 62, authoring the IEC 60601 standards. I love working with development teams, figuring out how to manage safety effectively. And I would like to teach you my, my approach for working with safety for medical devices. I will be showing you what safety is, the general requirements for safety, and how to navigate and apply the standards. You will also be briefed on why it is critical to identify specific requirements before you start the development of your medical devices. The goals of this short course are that you should get an understanding of what basic safety for medical devices is and why you should care about it and improve your chances of not ending up in projects that are behind schedule and over budget. Based on that, you should be able to figure out if the full course on safety for medical devices that we offer on medicaldevicehq.com could help you in your job or career. The full course is similar to this one, but much more comprehensive with more in-depth information and quizzes at the end of each topic to test your knowledge and understanding. At the end of the full course, you will also receive a course certificate which many auditors will be looking for. All manufacturers of medical devices aim to ensure that their products are safe and effective. Also, it is a regulatory requirement for any market where you wish to sell your product. Considering the diversity of medical devices, how they're used and the technologies they employ, this can be challenging. Therefore, standards have been developed to help manufacturers, test houses and regulators in this part, I will show you how the standards for electrical medical devices are structured. I will try to do this so you can navigate the standards and identify the relevant requirements without having to read many thousands of pages. All these standards in combination define what is called basic safety and essential performance for different types of devices. I will help you navigate these requirements and find the standards relevant to your product. The general standard relevant for safety for electrical medical devices is IEC 60601-1. This standard specifies general requirements for basic safety and essential performance. The general standard is an umbrella standard based on collateral standards and particular standards. The collateral standards specify general requirements applicable to subgroups of devices as well as specific characteristics of devices not covered by the general standard. The topics of the collateral standards include electromagnetic compatibility, usability, alarms, closed loop controllers, home healthcare, and EMS. In principle, each of these collateral standards apply in parallel with the general standard. In addition to the general standard and the collateral standards, we also have particular standards. Each of these apply to a very specific type of product. The particular standards may modify, replace or delete requirements contained in the general and the collateral standards. As the standards apply to electrical medical devices, having an unapplied part or a patient connection, you can imagine they define requirements for a lot of hazards. Some requirements are more detailed than others. The requirements include electrical requirements, including insulation, leakage current, protective earth. Mechanical requirements include structural integrity, moving parts, patient support systems, noise and vibration. 
radiation requirements include X-ray, alpha, beta, gamma, neutron, microwave, and light radiation. Temperature and other hazards include heat, cold, fire, spillage, cleaning, ingress of water and particulate matter. Use-related requirements include usability, home healthcare, alarms and hazardous outputs. Software requirements for the development process and risk management. Constructural requirements relate to controls, indicators, serviceability, connectors, replacement of components and wiring. Functional requirements are often defined in particular standards and in some of the collateral standards. All these requirements and other hazards relevant to your device need to be identified and managed through the risk management process. See our course on risk management at medicaldevicehq.com to find out more about risk management in particular. So if your medical device falls within the scope of the 6601-1, you are going to have to pay attention to all these requirements and reach at least the levels defined in the standards. Because if you don't, not only do you risk injuring people, but you're also likely to not meet the legal requirements for placing your product on the market. The goal with all of this is to ensure basic safety and essential performance, which basically means that patients and other users shall have freedom from unacceptable risk. Remember, the goal was to get an understanding of what basic safety for medical devices is. Let's start with the definition of only safety, which comes from ISO 14971. Safety is defined as freedom from unacceptable risk. What is then basic safety? Basic safety is to avoid unacceptable risk directly caused by physical hazards when med medical electrical equipment is used under normal condition and single fall condition. As you can tell, this is a slightly more narrow concept compared to safety in general. And this is the definition of essential performance, which has the same objective to avoid unacceptable risk. Now, if you only have one takeaway from this course, let it be this. Freedom from unacceptable risk is achieved through proactive risk management, requirement management, and verification during all development phases and thereafter. To establish that the device is safe, you should manage all risks relevant for electrical medical devices. Let's now talk about where most manufacturers fail to address safety by design and how you can proactively avoid making the same mistake. This will help you develop safe medical devices in an effective and efficient way. In my experience, the most common problem manufacturers face is the lack of proactive management of these many requirements. Many requi manufacturers won't spend any significant time on the requirements from 6061-1 until they have sent the medical device to third-party testing and discover that they did not meet one or several requirements. And some of these things you can do yourself to save time and money. This will be discussed further in the full course. Typically, safety-related activities are performed late in the design verification phase or even as late as the design validation phase. This results in failed tests, redesign and retesting, which add cost and delays. To avoid costly delays, I recommend that you identify the few relevant requirements early during the design phase and decide, decide how the design is going to meet these requirements. As I referred to in the beginning, the key to proactive safety by design is to start early and based on the intended purpose and technologies, identify which standards are applicable to your device. 
and identify which of the hazards and requirements are applicable to your device. Then document in design notes how the product is designed to be safe. It is critical to do this as a cross-functional team exercise because it is the combination of electronic, mechanic and software solutions that must meet the requirements. Remember, risk management should be a team effort and safety is a system property. In the beginning, I promised you I would share my trick to make safety engineering fun. To be honest, it's very simple. I always try to be curious and start by asking questions rather than finding solutions. I do this to identify the few features which are critical to the product, and then I focus on these. Next, I ask all stakeholders for their input. This includes team members, management, suppliers, and so on. I also consult standards and guidelines to ensure I understand all aspects of the requirements. When I have clarified what the key requirements are, and I have analyzed the ways they can be managed, then and only then is it time to identify and document solutions. So to state it simply, my trick is to focus on clarification and analysis before execution. This makes safety engineering much easier and way more fun. So by now, I hope you have a better understanding of what safety for medical devices and 60601 is all about. I also hope you have been inspired by my approach to proactive safety by design. These topics and many more will be elaborated further in the full course. Thank you for watching this short course. Do you need templates to give you inspiration or do you require more knowledge on safety for medical devices? You can find free templates or you can sign up for the full introduction to safety for medical devices and IEC 60601 course on medicaldevicehq.com. If you don't want to miss out on more premium content from our online courses, subscribe to this channel by clicking, clicking on the subscribe button below. Not only will you be kept up to date with what videos we publish, but you are also helping us reaching out to more people that work with medical devices. I hope to hear from you.